Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to the One Heart 4 p.m. service. Wherever in the world you are watching us from, we're so pleased to have you with us. Hopefully you're watching this at the official live stream page, livestream.oneheart.sydney on the internet, because there you'll find some handy features that will help us feel a sense of community as we go into today's service. The first thing, of course, just a quick reminder for those of you who are watching for the first, uh, who, are, who have been watching for a, a few weeks now, and also a greeting to those of you who are watching for the first time. We do have the chat on the right-hand side on that website, and we encourage you to keep that open for sharing uh, comments during the service. So we all have a sense that we're here together, even though for now, we still have to stay online and stay digital. Uh, before we continue, I also want to quickly remind all of us why we're here today. And this is from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 to 12. It's always good to remember this, because this is the vision that we're given from God. And this is, where, this is why we're gathered here today. And after this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and all the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. If you've been watching us for a few weeks now, you've heard Pastor Ace's sermons reflecting on all sorts of things from the book of Isaiah, and in particular, this kingdom of God. And that is what we're gathered here today for. So I just hope that we can all have our hearts ready to receive, um, receive the worship music that we're about to go into, receive the sermon from Pastor Ace, and also receive the fellowship from each other. At five o'clock and six o'clock, make sure that you connect with our Zoom groups. We've got youth, young adults, kids group, Korean group, and those links will be in the chat on the right-hand side uh, for Zoom, so make sure you stay connected with us there. During the service, we will also have the prayer button at the bottom if you've missed anything, especially if you need another copy of those links. And we do also have the offering for any regular members of the church who have the capacity and the heart to be part of that right now. And we'd love to invite you to join that, but only if you're a regular member of the church. If you're here for the first time, please just sit back and relax and enjoy being with God and worshiping today. Before we continue, we also want to acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional custodians of the land where we're gathering today and recording this service, the Walumarago people of the Eora Nation, and we pay respect to their elders, leaders, and past, present, and emerging. So with that, I want to invite you all now to be part of the icebreaker question. This is just a fun thing that we do at the end of the announcements every week. Um, so the icebreaker question for today is this. What are you looking forward to? There's a lot of sad things right now, but I think we all need something to look forward to. But yes, please also, in the chat on the right-hand side, share what you're looking forward to, and I look forward to seeing you in church. Thanks, everyone, and take care. What I've been told to be ashamed What I've been told Don't measure up Lord, I've been told I'm not good enough, but you're here with me. I reach out and do find me in the dust. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say no. reach 
reach out I reach out and Welcome to another One Heart service and welcome to the praise and worship session of today's service. Um, it's been a bit of a week, um, wet and rainy week this um, week, so I hope everyone's been safe and dry and keeping warm. Um, spring is almost upon us, so um, hopefully not too long until we can hopefully go out to the park and have fun in the sun. Um, for this praise and worship, I just want all of us to... Um, close our eyes and to um, get into the mindset and into the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Um, let us acknowledge and pray before we go into the praise and worship. So if you could all pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for this time of praise and worship and the opportunity to be able to praise and worship you, Lord. Um, although we are apart, um, please help us to unite our hearts and our minds together as brothers and sisters and as a family in your name, Lord. Um, during this time, Lord, help us to let go of any of our issues or troubles, um, even our own self, and to really um, have eyes on you and to let you sit on the thrones of our hearts and to know why we're here to worship you. Um, help us to not let our egos or our own prides get the better of us. Um, let us raise our voices to worship you and to really glorify your name um, because this is what it's all about. It's about you. Um, please help us to have eyes on you and be with us. Send your Holy Spirit to be with us in this um, present moment, wherever we may be, um, so that we can become one in your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Can't stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty?
I want us to continue to reflect on this powerful confession that we just have proclaimed in one voice, in one heart, in one spirit. The Word of God always assures us to be able to confess this kind of prayers and confession. Where I am going to build my life upon. Where I am going to put my trust. Now I want us to gather our hearts and make this space and time more genuinely. That we want to worship our God and acknowledge His presence. No matter where you are, His Spirit is now going to reach to you. And we'll bless you. If we can truly confess this prayer once again. Lord, Father God, I will build my life upon this love. I will put my trust in you, Lord. So why don't we put our voice once again, very quietly and genuinely. This is now your time that you can worship and confess this chorus once again as your prayers, as your confession. And may the Spirit of God hear your prayers today, even though we have gathered in this online platform, this omnipresence God who is in everywhere. We hear our worship today. Come on, let's sing. I will build my life upon this love. I will put my trust in our Lord Jesus Christ once again. Am I ready? Say. I will build my life upon your love. It is a Again, let's declare this together. I will build my life upon your love, Lord. It is my foundation, Jesus. Lord, Father God, as we confess together with one voice, with one heart, with one spirit, please hear our prayers and answer to our prayers today. As we are now going through this crazy world at the moment, as a churches, as, a, as an individual Christians, as, as all of your people, but what we want to see ourselves is not going to be shaken. No matter what kind of issues will attack us and no matter what kind of problems we will face too. We are not going to be shaken. We put our trust in you, Lord. We put our trust in your words and in your promises. And through what we are going to explore 
this book of Isaiah. Please teach us how to remain in this group of faithful people that God will bless and continue to lead. That we will open our hearts. We will be connected with your spirit, Lord, today. That we truly believe that you heard us singing and praising and praying and crying out to you, Lord, today. In Jesus' name, we all pray. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, team, for your wonderful and amazing service and, and leadership in this worship ministry. And then we welcome you all who are joining our online worship today. Then I want to invite our sister Elisa to come forward and share with us our Bible passage that God is going to speak, speak to us through. So please welcome Elisa, and she's going to share with us Bible passage. Today's Bible reading will be from Isaiah chapter 28, verse 1 to 13. Woe to that wreath, the pride of Ephraim's drunkards, to the fading flower, his glorious beauty, set on the head of a fertile valley, to that city, the pride of those laid low by wine. See, the Lord has one who is powerful and strong, like a hailstorm and a destructive wind. Like a driving rain and a flooding downpour, he will throw it forcefully to the ground. That wreath, the pride of Ephraim's drunkards, will be trampled underfoot. That fading flower, his glorious beauty, set on the head of a fertile valley, will be like a fig ripe before harvest. As soon as someone sees it and takes it in his hand, he swallows it. In that day, the Lord Almighty will be a glorious crown, a beautiful wreath for the remnant of his people. He will be a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment, a source of strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. And those also stagger from wine and reel from beer. Priests and prophets stagger from beer and are befuddled with wine. They reel from beer. They stagger when seeing visions. They stumble when rendering decisions. All the tables are covered with vomit, and there is not a spot without filth. Who is it is he trying to teach? To whom is he explaining his message? To children weaned from their milk, for to those just taken from their breast? For it is, do and do, do and do, rule on rule, rule on rule. A little here, a little there. Very well then, with foreign lips and strange tongues, God will speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the resting place, let the weary rest, and this is the peace of repose, but they would not listen. So then, the word of the Lord to them will become, Do and do, do and do, rule on rule, rule on rule, a little here, a little there so that they will go and fall backward, be injured and snared and captured. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear God, we pray today for those who are separated from their family and friends who are isolated and feel helpless in these testing times of COVID-19. Many of us are overseas or required to stay at home and miss the interactions that defined our work, social and spiritual lives. Please give them the support and comfort that they are not alone and can trust in you. We also pray for those who are unable to work from home and are on the front line, in hospitals, nursing homes, public transport, and even in supermarkets. They bravely risk their lives every day to serve the community. We pray that they stay healthy and strong, both mentally and physically, so they can continue fulfilling their important roles. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Lebanon who were affected by the blast and pray that those in power realize and accept their mistakes and start making decisions for their people. We are continuing to witness the growing inequality between the rich and the poor in the world. In places in the world like America, shameless politicians pass laws to destroy the environment 
bolster old corrupt and dangerous industries, destroy democracy, and seek to sow seeds of hatred between people by race, all in the name of Christianity. Please open our eyes and ears to these lies and open our hearts and voices to challenge such forces of evil. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's keyword that we want to focus on is remnant. Now, this passage talks about how God is going to destroy uh, this nation of northern Israel. And then we all now understand that this name Ephraim is another name of northern Israel. Ephraim is the capital city of Samaria, and then Samaria is part of northern Israel. And then we need to find out what God is going to do with these uh, remained faithful people, faithful people of God. The word remnant um, in a biblical uh, way of understanding of this word remnant is minority number of people who remained in their faithfulness. So God will save them. And when you went through today's passage, the main title for today's Bible reading is All to the Leaders of Ephraim and Judah. It is an official title of today's Bible reading. And as some of you already know that, in, 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 in real history, this northern Israel has completely destroyed by Assyria in the year 722 BC. And um, Judah was destroyed by Babylon in about 580 uh, BC. And now this prophetic voice is went back to the time just before 722 BC as he started prophesizing that you will be destroyed. If we read verse 2, it says, See, the Lord has one who is powerful and strong like a hailstorm and, and a destructive wind, like a driving rain and a flooding downpour. He will throw it forcefully to the ground. It says, The Lord has one who is powerful and strong. And this is Assyria. And now, it, this prophetic voice is, is proclaiming and prophesizing that God is going to use Assyria to destroy. He will send Assyria as a hailstorm, as a destructive wind, like a driving rain and a flooding downpour. And it will destroy this northern Israel. As we have learned and studied that um, northern Israel and Assyria have agreed to be in alliance to be able to protect them. To be able to protect them. And, and they, Assyria has betrayed and they started conquering them. They started attacking them. And throughout this history, we should understand that Ephraim was, was on top of the mountain that was rich and farming land. They were located in fertile land. God has blessed them to be fruitful, to look after their land, to be fruitful, to be blessed as a people of God. But today's Bible reading explains that they are well-known people as drunkards, as a drunken people. They had very serious issue of drinking wines. And then it even mentions here that the beer, the problem, their attitude and way of abusing alcohol. So this is really interesting image of describing those failing and corrupted people of God with their abusive way of dealing the alcohols. And then we will go and have a look at that part later on. And according to this passage today, I want us to think about what makes us feeling guilt to live as a Christians. In, in another sentence, what is the most important thing before God in your life? 
what is more important thing than God in your life? As we have been studying and exploring this book of Isaiah, we understand that after King Solomon, they have divided into two nations, and particularly this northern Israel. Northern Israel, according to the, the history, I don't know if you can believe it or not, they, have, they never had faithful and good king in their history ever. After third king of Israel, Solomon. Throughout their history, there was no faithful or good king in the eyes of God. That's how God had to send this God's power, Assyria, to judge them and teach, to teach them what will happen if they betray God and turn around from God and run away from God. So this passage teaches us what kind of idols and more important things that we have in our daily life. As Israelites started worshipping other idols, they started chasing other powers of other powerful countries around them instead of following God and His teaching and His words. It is very important for us to remember what kind of idols we do have in our lives, in our daily journey as a children of God. And this wreath, now this pride of Israel will be destroyed, will be removed. The symbol of wreath is, is describing the champion, the winner. As, as some of you already understand, that from earlier Olympic Games, the winner has received this wreath as a symbol of winner, as a symbol of the champion of the game. But now it says in the beginning of today's passage, all to the wreath, the pride of Ephraim's drunkard, to the fading flower, his glorious beauty, set on the head of the fertile valley, to that city, the pride of those laid low by wine. So it will be destroyed, it will be gone. And they started making fun of teachings of God's word. In verse 9, they started replying and responding to the teachings of the Lord in a way that who is it he is trying to teach? To whom is he explaining his message? To children, when from their milk to those just taken from the breast. So when they started hearing those words and teachings of the prophet who was sent by God, they started treating it. They started responding to it in a way of making fun of it. And God started becoming really upset and serious about their attitude towards the word of God, towards the covenant and commandment of God. I think we sometimes come to the church, particularly those who were born in the church community and grew up in the church community. Whenever we are listening to the word of God, we sort of started losing our interest and genuine attitude towards it. Because you may believe and assume that I already know the passage. I already know what the preacher is going to talk about. I already know the background of the story. I've been hearing it so many times throughout my life. I was born as a, as a, as a, as a um, Christian. I was born as a minister's kid. I was born, my, my parents are leaders of the church. We used to have family service all the time. And I have been to Sunday school all the time. And then I know most of the stories in the Bible. If you imagine, those Israelites, they, they had really strong pride as a chosen people of God. Because they have received this canon the commandment of God. That's what they, they were so proud of and started looking down on all the other Gentiles. But now they started making fun of what the prophets are prophesizing and teaching and, and, and warning those corrupted and unfaithful people of God who were chosen in the first place but now they started corrupting in that blessing. 
So instead of being faithful and fearful in the eyes of God, in their act and practice of looking after this land, what God has given to them, they started becoming drunken people. They started becoming numb for what they are sinning against to God. They started making fun of what the Word of God teaches them. They started losing the direction. We, we have read this very interesting um, description of their um, faith journey in the eyes of God. In verse 7 it says, And these also stagger from wine and reel from beer. I think some of you can imagine what it means. Have you seen any drunken people who can't work straight? Who always works on side? That, that's what it says. These chosen people of God now completely lost the direction of their life. Lost their goals and values and their vision that was given by God. That's what it was described. But the powerful message in the book of Isaiah, according to what we have learned, is not just about the word of God that will destroy his people. I think the real message in the book of Isaiah is this message of hope for those remnant. People who kept their faith as, as a part of this remnant of God's people. And that's what it says in verse 5 and 6. It says, In that day the Lord Almighty will be a glorious crown, a beautiful wreath for the remnant of his people. Let me read it once again. Verse 5, after this prophetic voice of judgment, it says, In that day the Lord Almighty will be a glorious crown, a beautiful wreath for the remnant of his people. And verse 6, it says, He will be a spirit of justice to the one who sits in judgment, a source of strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. Who turned back the battle at the gate. I need to make sure that we all should not be confused with today's Bible passage. Some of you may think, oh wow, now the main problem what Israelites has committed and sin they have committed to is drinking wines and beer. It's not. It's not. I do not want to go dive into that shallow level of understanding this the passage, this Bible reading today. The real problem is not about drinking wine, drinking beer. As we already know that they used to use wine as a medicine. That's what it says. Uh, Apostle Paul, in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 5, verse 23, he says, to um, this young pastor, Timothy, stop drinking only water and use a little wine because of your stomach and your frequent illness. So the Israelites and according to Jewish culture, they used to use wine as a medicine. They could drink it and be healed from some of disease and illnesses. And then as we already know that at the Last Supper, Jesus has blessed his disciples with, with bread and with wine. Drinking wine is not the main issue in this passage. But the main issue, what northern Israel has committed, the sin that they have committed to, is about being neglective for what God has given to them. His vision, his word, his teaching, his land, that they should be fruitful and be faithful by working hard in that land what is given by God. We all should enjoy what God has given to us. But in a way that we can control ourselves as a people of God to be a good example of Christians living and examples as a faithful people that we can comfort 
and encourage others to join the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. We should be able to take good role models and good examples of our actual livings. If one of your friends come to you and see you drinking wine and be disappointed because they understand that you are a faithful Christian, you better stop drinking alcohol. There is no reason that you will need to continue to drink alcohol. If you go to somewhere for the mission trips and that particular village and tribe people, they have very strong and, and clear cost culture that they express the sense of hospitality by giving and sharing their, their cultural wine, I think you should drink it. To bless them, to be engaged with them. But for the glory of God, we all need to learn how to control ourselves. We all need to learn how to be moderated in drinking and understand how we can focus and prioritize the vision of God, what God has given to you and me. That's the more important thing. And then if we can keep our faith in our daily lives, and understand who we are with this significant word remnant of God's people. Remnant of God's people. What we need to understand is that now our journey in this secular world is about the spiritual battle. What we need to fight for the good fight. Fight for the good fight. That's what Apostle Paul says in, in, in one of his um, uh, pastoral letters to his spiritual son, Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, he says, I have fought the good fight. Paul has confessed that I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, the wreath of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge will award to me on that day and not only to me but also to all who have lodged for his appearing isn't it really powerful reminder of what kind of our journey looks like as a christians to live in this 21st century and then now we are dealing with this downism and postmodernism. We sometimes don't know what is right and what is the truth and what is false teachings. We're all going to be confused if we do not keep ourselves being faithful and to fight for a good fight. We are in this spiritual warfare, guys. That's what Jesus reminds us. That's what Paul reminds us. Jesus said that I am sending you as a sheep to wolves. Many apostles started a teaching that you will face to serious persecutions and be joyful because your wreath, your crown, your orbit are waiting in the kingdom of God. The spiritual warfare. Those early Christians have lived their life to be in this spiritual battle. Not to follow the worldly pattern, but to keep themselves as faithful people, as a remnant, remnant of God's people. And then throughout the history of the Bible, God always chose those remnant, minority number of people who kept their faith in the eyes of God. When God started judging and punishing his people with a flood, God has chosen Noah and his family as a remnant to keep his blessing and promise of becoming the channel of God's blessing for many people. And when Elijah was terribly disappointed after he won the battle with all those other prophets of Baal, Decibel the queen started proclaiming that I will chase him and kill him. Then he almost given up his life. And he started crying out to God, Kill me, Lord. I'm done. 
I've done enough. There's no one I can rely on. And then God has sent the angel and fed them and reminded them, reminded him, Elijah. And he said, I have left 7,000 people who did not worship Baal. Remnant. When Jesus Christ has ascended, and then a lot of people have disappointed, even his disciples ran away from him. And yet, there were 120 people who believed, who put, put, who put their trust in this promise of Jesus Christ and his teaching, and experienced this remarkable power of the Holy Spirit. 120 people on the day of Pentecost. They have received the power of the Holy Spirit. Remnant of God's people. Friends, I want to ask you. Are you part of this remnant of God's people? Do you really keep your faith in this crazy world these days? With this restriction that we cannot gathered together on Sundays at the church to worship together and have genuine fellowship as Christian sisters and brothers, do you still keep your faith as a part of remnant of God's people? God seeks true worshipers who worships God in the truth and in his spirit. Can, can you hear that more seriously? When it says, when Jesus says, God seeks true worshipers, which means they, they, not all of us are true worshipers. You need to understand it more seriously. When Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, when she was finding place to worship, Jesus' answer was not about where to worship, but who is going to give true worship to God? Remnant of God's people, true worshipers. And during this crazy time of COVID-19, I encourage you all to keep yourself, be faithful, to be part of this remnant of God's people. And this is what God will tell you and promise you directly. Again, verse 5 and 6, in that day, when we see the kingdom of God is coming, when we see that our Lord Jesus Christ is coming back, like what our brother Blair has shared with us in the beginning of the service, on that day that we will see this great multitude no one could count coming from all tribes, languages, and nations, will gather together to worship and welcome our Lord Jesus Christ. In that day, the Lord Almighty will be a glorious crown for you. A beautiful wreath for you, for the remnant of God's people. And he will be a spirit of justice to the one who sits in judgment. And then he will become a source of strength to you and me, who will turn back to the battle, this spiritual warfare. So I encourage you all, to raise yourself up and be faithful, to be prepared to fight for the good fight that we will continue to seek more worshipers to join us and lead this cross-cultural and missional and worshiping movement, not only for ourselves, for all nations, as we learned that God is God of gods, Lord of lords, and King of all nations. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father God, we give you thanks and praise for your powerful words in this book of Isaiah. Lord God, we are very sad and overwhelmed to hear these words of judgment on your own people that you have chosen. Lord Father God, this story in the book of Isaiah really teaches us and reminds us and warns us that we will need to keep our faith in our daily journey as your children. 
and then we want to see ourselves being part of this remnant of God's people. That you will show us your almighty power and your glory and your, your beautiful image that you are our God, the Father. Lord, please keep ourselves as a faithful people of God and bless each and every one of us as we have committed to this online worship as an expression of our willingness to keep our faith in you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we all pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Father God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and always. Let us go in peace to serve and love our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is my confidence. You've never failed your promise. Your promise still stands. This is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never
of my life. Mm. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I will put my trust I want us to continue to reflect on this powerful confession that we just have proclaimed in one voice, in one heart, in one spirit. The Word of God always assures us to be able to confess this kind of prayers and confession. Where I am going to build my life upon, where I am going to put my trust Now, I want us to gather our hearts and make this space and time more genuinely that we want to worship our God and acknowledge His presence. No matter where you are, His Spirit is now going to reach to you and will bless you if we can truly confess this prayer once again. Lord, Father God, I will build my life upon this love. I will put my trust in you, Lord. So why don't we put our voice once again, very quietly and genuinely. This is now your time that you can worship and confess. This chorus once again as your prayers, as your confession. And may the Spirit of God hear your prayers today, even though we have gathered in this online platform, this omnipresence God who is in everywhere. We hear our worship today. Come on, let's sing. I will build my life upon this love.
I will put my trust in our Lord Jesus Christ once again. Am I ready? Say. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be. Once again, let's declare this together. I 